Um, how about um, your decision to file a lawsuit against SpaceX? Can you talk to me about that? Uh, yes, uh, Chairman. Let me ask it this way first. Did Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter have anything to do with the Justice Department's decision to file that lawsuit against SpaceX? The uh, investigation into SpaceX was open during the last administration, and we filed an administrative action under the Immigration and Nationality Act, an important law passed by this body with bipartisan support and signed into law by President Reagan. So what, what are you alleging that, that SpaceX did wrong? Uh, in this case, we allege that the company is not compliant with the anti-discrimination provisions of the Immigration and Nationality Act. This is a law that has been- Who are they discriminating uh, against? Uh, here they are discriminating against um, people who have received refugee and asylum status by our federal courts under the so INA. Refugee, they're discriminating against refugees and asylum seekers, oh, is that no, right? Uh, uh, no, Chairman, uh, against people who have received refugee status and asylum status by our federal courts and who enjoy equal standing under federal law uh, to U.S. citizens and, and naturalized citizens. The law requires equal treatment of these individuals. It and is you're saying that SpaceX did not hire, is that, is that appropriate, did not hire enough refugees or uh, people who've been granted asylum? Uh, they, is that what you're asserting in the lawsuit? Uh, they, and that they discourage those people from applying for any job, whether it's for a, a custodial uh, position, a mm -hmm. office clerk, uh, someone who works in a kitchen facility, all the way up through engineering. So you're suing, you're, I just want to cut to the chase, you're suing SpaceX because they hired too many Americans, too many citizens, um, this, not enough people who are refugees or people who've been granted asylum. This investigation. And you waited to sue. This investigation started three years ago. I know the facts. Last it started three years ago. And yet you bring the lawsuit after Mr. Musk purchases Twitter, now X. Is that right? Uh, we apply the laws that this body gave us without fear or favor. And, and, and Mr. Uh, Musk, his assertion is that they're dealing with national security type information at SpaceX. And that's why he's even posted this before you brought the lawsuit. He said this. That's why they focus on hiring people who have a green card or are American citizens. And you guys say this is something we, we need to go after. SpaceX, because they're not hiring enough Americans, and we need to charge Ava Edel, 87-year-old concentration camp survivor. That's what the Justice Department and the Biden administration needs to do. But oh, by the way, we don't know anything about Missouri v. Biden. We didn't weigh in on the issue where a governor of a state told the citizens, they're American citizens, you cannot exercise your Second Amendment rights contrary to the law, contrary to what the Supreme Court has said, and you're trying to tell us today. But the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department is not political. Frankly, I, I find it almost laughable that you're making that argument because anyone with common sense and any objectivity can see you guys are definitely political. That I yield back in a few minutes, but I now yield to the ranking member for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, may I ask unanimous consent that the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Dean, a member of the full committee, be permitted to sit on the dais. Yeah. She's not going to ask any questions. Uh, without objection. Thank you very much. Um, good day to everyone. Every day, the American people share with members of Congress, social media friends, family, and anyone who will listen that they live largely in fear for their future. When I scroll through my social media feeds, I see people worried they don't have job opportunities or job security the generation before them had, worried they don't have time, resources, or support to take care of sick parents or disabled relatives, worried they won't be able to afford to buy a home to call their own, worried they will not be able to see their kids send their children to college or simply provide for their children the way they were provided for. I see Americans are concerned. I see parents concerned that schools are becoming unsafe for their children. I see Americans are concerned that rights are being taken away. Americans concerned that their vote might be discounted or may not even be able to cast a vote. In the discussion of the weaponization of the federal government, the majority has acknowledged the fact 
in this discussion of the weaponization of government, I'm sorry, um, one of the things that I've requested that we look into is the IRS audits of working class people and people of color, which are far, far at a higher rate than millionaires and billionaires, or a discussion in a hearing of actions by the former President Donald Trump and what he has said he will do to weaponize our government if reelected. However, we're not having a hearing about those topics. We're not having discussions. Congress is not engaged in making any headway on those things that Americans are most concerned with. Today, we're having a hearing with witnesses on the Republican side, two of whom we've already heard from. In fact, this is the second hearing where Republicans have brought out repeat witnesses, the second hearing in a row. In preparation for the 2024 presidential election, Republicans on this, select, this committee want to entrench their theory of social media censorship, their unfounded accusation that social media companies are colluding with the government to censor conservative voices. There's no evidence of this collusion, and in fact, this committee has heard closed-door testimony from 29 witnesses who have said on the record, government as well as social media individuals, that the alleged collusion and supposed censorship claimed by the committee Republicans has not taken place. But Republicans won't release that testimony, and they are not being honest with the American people because as they ramp up their own misinformation campaign before the 2024 election, they need free reign to elevate hate, to engage in voter suppression online, in addition to their normal in-person voter suppression tactics. He's not eating. He's not eating. Mar-a-Lago, what the hell, Kevin? They're really worried, McCarthy said. Trump's not eating, so they asked me to come see him. What? You went to Mar-a-Lago because Trump's not eating? Liz Cheney responded. He's really depressed, McCarthy said. That's why we're here. Trump's not eating, and this entire Congress has been Jim Jordan and MAGA Republicans feeding Trump. They're just feeding the beast with the insane hearings that they're holding all over the Capitol. That's why these three witnesses have been pulled out of the important work they do, is because Trump is not eating. This is not the first feast for the beast. In fact, we've seen this the whole Congress. We saw the creation of the Weaponization Committee. There have been multiple investigations into the investigation of Hunter Biden. There's been an investigation into the prosecutor who indicted Hunter Biden. There have been efforts to defund the FBI, who were a part of a raid onto Mar-a-Lago. There's been an effort to undermine the New York District Attorney's investigation into the former president. They brought in prosecutors who were a part of that investigation. There have been letters to Fannie Willis in her January 6 investigation into the former president. So you're just here as a part of an effort to feed the beast. And Jim Jordan, who has assembled this hearing today, and the other MAGA Republicans are just working every day as Trump's chef. But this isn't top chef. This is the United States Congress. We were sent here to govern. We're not sent here to work every day on behalf of one person. He's not eating. And that's why you're here, to feed him. And then there's the comical hypocrisy that Jim Jordan would convene a hearing around anyone's subpoena compliance. You see, we are now 567 days, 19 hours, 12 minutes, and 35 seconds into Jim Jordan refusing to comply with the subpoena for his involvement in January 6, an attack on the Capitol. And you would think that a member of Congress who has sworn an oath to defend the Constitution would want to help their government in the largest investigation the country has ever taken the largest investigation with the most indictments, the most witnesses, the most trials around a single event, the chairman of this committee, who's got a problem with 
the subpoena compliance, and we're going to talk about the overcompliance that we've seen from your agencies, it's just comical that he would call a hearing to complain about you complying with subpoenas when he, 567 days in, won't even comply with the zone. And these claims, it's clear that what Republicans want to do to impeach Joe Biden is not working. They can't draw the straight line between what they think Hunter Biden did and what they want Joe Biden to have done. They may prove at the end of this Congress that Hunter Biden is Joe Biden's son. That may be coming. But they have not proved anything else, and so they're trying to draw the foul. They're going to ask for dozens, hundreds, thousands of documents, and they're going to hope that you're not going to respond to one of them, so now they have an obstruction of justice case to use as the predicate for impeachment. I also want to talk about the transcribed interviews, because you all have sent to this committee 92 individuals to be a part of transcribed private interviews. Not for the public to observe, but 92 private transcribed interviews. Take a guess at how many of those interviews have resulted in a public hearing. It's zero. It is all theater. It is all to feed the beast. Because Donald Trump's not eating, so they have to haul these people in. They learn in private that there is no wrongdoing, and so we never hear about it in public. Finally, the center of so many of these investigations has been the current president's son. And you would think, after a year of hearings about the current president's son and the indictments against the current president's son and the prosecutors involved in the case of the current president's son and the private transcribed interviews around the current president's son, that you would see the Republicans bring in for a public hearing the president's son. And so what happened this week? The Republicans subpoena Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden says, great, I'll come in. I'll testify publicly. And Jim Jordan and James Comer, they can't take yes for an answer. They don't want him to testify publicly. And it's for the same reason that the other 92 witnesses have never come in. It is all to just feed the beast, to keep Donald Trump happy. So, welcome to a post-Thanksgiving meal to feed Donald Trump. And I introduce to you the chefs, led by top chef Jim Jordan and... Chef Boy McCarthy, who went down to Mar-a-Lago in their effort to keep Donald Trump happy. I yield back. So, folks, what you just saw there was the slicing and dicing of Jim Jordan. And it really connects to his legal troubles because this man is going to be taken down by Capitol Hill police. It's already happened in my mind, at least, and probably in yours, too, because he is complicit in old Donnie's crimes. And remember what um, MAGA Mike, the new speaker, said today, that he wants to release all the info in the world about the J6 thing, but blur everyone's faces so that they can't be hit by the DOJ. And that's not really to protect the rank and file cronies. They don't really care about them. It's to protect the bigwigs like himself and Jim Jordan, and everybody who played a part in the coup, because the more webs that exist, the worse it gets. But you saw Jim absolutely storm out there and freak out as a Democrat and Biden officials, Democrats from all over, crushed him, and he deserves to be crushed. 